In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, Jesus gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then the disciples gathered around Jesus and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. The disciples were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Anyone in my family will tell you that I'm good at losing things. I wouldn't exactly agree with them. I'm more good at mislaying things because I put things down and then I can't remember where I put them. So I go hunting high and low to try and find them. And then more often than not, where I find them is right there underneath my nose, under your nose, or under my nose, under our nose. That's one way of looking at the story or the account of Jesus's ascension. Right at the start of the book of Acts, we hear Jesus's very final words to his disciples before he ascends into heaven. Jesus tells them, to stay in Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit. The disciples ask him again, when Lord, when Jesus, will you restore the kingdom to Israel? But Jesus tells them not to worry about that, not to worry about the timing, but to wait for the Holy Spirit and to be witnesses. We talk about Jesus's ascension in that passage, but I think what it's really about is not what's happening to Jesus, but what will happen to the disciples. Twice in those few verses, Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit coming to the disciples and to the church in a new and very different way. It's as different from what has gone before, as the Spirit is different to the water when John baptised. It's as different from what has gone before, as the kingdom of God in verse 3 is different from the political kingdom of King David and his descendants. The disciples always seem to be looking for the change and the restoration of the kingdom of Israel, something out there as it were. But Jesus talks about a change far closer to home, that which is under our very noses, ourselves. At Jesus's ascension, the disciples look back on his earthly life, but they also are encouraged to look forward to life and activity in and through the power of the Holy Spirit. I think there are parallels for us at the moment. We look forward 
to the restoration of freedoms coming from moving out of lockdown. We look forward to what we're about to experience, going out to a pub or a restaurant from a meal, being able to invite family and friends into our homes, cinemas, theatres reopening, the chance again to hug as long as we are careful. We move forward with relief and excitement, but that relief and excitement is also tinged with caution as we look back to where we have been. And I wonder if the disciples had that same mixture of experiences, hearing Jesus's words, excitement at moving forward, but also that sense of caution. But for us and the disciples, the Holy Spirit is both promised and present. Jesus links the Holy Spirit with witnessing in that passage. They're like two sides of the same coin. But what is witnessing? Put simply, I think it's about remembering. If you've watched any TV police dramas, you'll know that when they speak to a witness, they ask them to remember, to tell them what happened. And I think that's the same with us when we witness to Christ. It's about sharing what we know, what we've experienced of the love, of the strength and of the peace of Christ. Nothing more, but also nothing less. I wonder if we make witnessing more complicated. It should be as natural as breathing. It's about who we are, people of faith. It's giving expression to what we say, to what we do, to how we give our lives. Witnessing is just that. When Jesus tells his disciples where they're going to witness, he starts off with Jerusalem, which is exactly where the disciples are. And it's the same with us. We are called to witness where we are, right under our noses. Perhaps this story about the Ascension will explain things better. A group of school children were asked to paint a picture or to draw a drawing of Jesus's Ascension. Some created a picture of a rocket ship blasting off upwards with Jesus peering out of one of the portholes. Others had Jesus in a giant glass elevator, lifting upwards into the sky. One person had a sheet of paper and there was barely anything on it. Just right at the top of the page, there were a couple of feet dangling, as if Jesus was rising up and all you could see were his feet. But there was one picture that stood out. It was a picture of a pair of empty sandals. The teacher who was looking at all the, that the uh, children had created looked at it and wondered what it was about. So they asked the student and the young artist replied that they were Jesus's sandals and he'd left them for us. I can think of no better way of explaining the ascension, no better image than that. We are left Jesus's sandals to walk in Jesus's shoes, 
to walk in the strength of God, witnessing to the love and life offered by him. Witnessing to anyone, to everyone, starting with those right under our noses. Let's pray. Risen and ascended Lord Jesus, thank you for the promise and the gift of your Holy Spirit. Give us the courage and the encouragement to walk in your shoes and to be witnesses to your love, to your life for all. Amen.